Hi, this is Peter McLaughlin, founder of Greater Boston Code Consultants. Uh, this is a short video on understanding rules and regulations for the construction supervisor's license exam. Um, it is for Architectural Access Board, which is uh, handicap accessibility rules and regs. There's probably maybe eight to ten questions on your exam, and one of the most important things to understand is the formula, and that's what I'm talking about here is the formula when it comes to understanding the rules and regs. First thing that we need to talk about is the book as a whole. Okay, a lot of people don't understand. Like they want to, th uh, they think that you're going to get tested on. Um, I don't know. You're going to get tested on what, what size bathroom you need, how many inches off the the wall does the toilet need to be, all that kind of stuff. Really not. What, what you're going to be tested on, guys, is basically formulas on when to apply the book. So it's AAB rules and regs. Okay. Um, so AAB rules and regs. The first thing, the first thing that we need to talk about is the book as a whole. Okay. A lot of people don't understand. Like they want to, th uh, they think that you're going to get tested on. Um, I don't know, you're going to get tested on what, what size bathroom you need, how many inches off the, the wall does the toilet need to be, all that kind of stuff. Really not. What, what you're going to be tested on, guys, is basically formulas on when to apply the book. Does that make sense? When to apply this book. Now, let me ask you a question. When do you use, um, when, when do you use the AAB book? And what kind of building? Not just commercial. Commercial is not the right answer. Any building that is what? Open to the public. So any buildings that are open to the public being what? A bank, let's say, right? A bank is open to the public. It's got to be made accessible, correct? Now, if it's not open to the public, AAB rules and regs do not comply. You don't have to comply with it. So if you work for a company, let's say Genzyme, or you work for a construction company, and it's on the third floor of a high-rise building, and you can't, there's steps to get in, it's not accessible. You don't have to make it accessible, okay? So that's one big thing. Uh, there's a couple of nuances to this, um, to this kind of, um, to, the, to the questions that are on the exam. You just need to know when to apply it. And one of the first things we need to know is, when do you apply the formula? There's a formula in your book. It's on page seven, okay? It's on page seven and it's, um, it's actually a pretty simple formula, but it's used all the time. It's the only book, the only book that deals with money, okay? And you're gonna be asked questions on this formula. There's no doubt about it, and you can see in your work your worksheet here, week five, that somewhere around uh, question seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, those are all formula questions. They're all questions that are based on using this particular formula. And here it is in a nutshell, guys. It's on page seven in your book, three, three, one, uh, section three, three, one, page seven. Number one, the first thing in the formula is less than $100,000 in work, only the work being done has to conform. Make sense? So let's, let's get that bank. We have a bank. We've established it's open to the public, correct? You are working on the bank and you're doing telestations, brand new telestations. But there's three steps to get into the bank. The job cost is $80,000. The only thing that would have to comply is the teller stations, whatever that is. Maybe you need one teller station that's ADA compliant, correct? And maybe you can have six that they don't have to be accessible, but that's the only work being done, less than 100,000, that's all that needs to comply. Make sense? Now, the second piece of the, of the formula is 
over a hundred thousand dollars the work being done plus an entrance so let's say that teller station is a hundred and twenty thousand dollars you with me not a hundred not not eighty anymore it's a hundred and twenty so once it goes to one hundred and twenty thousand what happens is you have to fix the three steps going in. So the work being done has to comply, okay, plus the steps has to comply. And it says in the form of that um, a, a toilet, if, uh, if you're, if you're uh, giving people access to the toilet and a drinking fountain and a telephone. <coughs> you don't have to uh, worry about telephones anymore. They don't even have them anymore. So it's really the entrance. So what we're talking about is work being done under a hundred thousand, correct? Only the work being done over a hundred. Work being done plus an entrance if the entrance isn't uh, is accessible, correct? Also, the other thing you got to worry about is the third piece. Once you go over thirty percent of the third part of the formula, you go over thirty percent of the assessed value then the whole project has to comply. So let's say, for instance, the bank. We'll stick with that. You're doing teller stations. You're doing a couple of offices over. Maybe you're doing a new ATM machine. All that has to comply, because that's work being done, correct? But let's say that work is, um, the contract's 350000 for that. The assessed value is a million. Then what happens? You're over 30%. The whole building has to comply. Does that make sense? Absolutely. The whole building has to comply. Hey, there's a seat here, seat here, seat there. Um, so, but there's a couple of caveats to that. When we're talking about the formula, there's a few exceptions. On page 7 of your book, you'll see down at the bottom where it says A, B, C, and D, and all that stuff. Look at, look at C. Any type of maintenance issues when it comes to doing work to this bank is absolutely doesn't count towards the assessment of uh, how much money you're spending. So, for example, let's say you're spending I don't know, it, it's the same bank, uh, it's a brick building, right? You, you get a job, it's a brick building with keyways and granite keyways and, and lintels and all that kind of stuff. You get a job to, to cut out all the keyways, waterproof everything, correct? Let's say you're taking out, uh, you're cutting and repointing everything. So after all that said and done, it's 310000 to do all that work. The property's only worth a million bucks, correct? It's over 30% of the assessed value. So if you were to just take that formula without the exception, you would have to say the whole building has to comply. But it doesn't have to comply. Those things are considered maintenance. And when you get into maintenance issues, that money that it doesn't go towards how much money you're spending. Does that make sense? Kinda? Okay. Uh, a couple other things about uh, handicap accessibility. And the first one is um, they're going to talk about, um, just like any other code, guys, when we talk about changes of use, okay? So for a building code, let's say in a building code, you change from residential, you have a single family house, right? Your attic is used for storage, okay? You're gonna, you have an old set of stairs going up to that attic. They're okay, but they're old, okay? The rise and run are way off, okay? So now you, what you want to do is convert the, that attic to habitable space. So you're going from non-habitable to habitable, correct? When you go non-habitable to habitable, what happens is now you have to bring that space up to code. So, you, so that set of stairs is not grandfathered in, you're going to have to bring that up to code. Does that make sense? Same thing with the energy code. But we're not, when we talk about energy code, 
We're not talking about habitable and non-habitable. What we're talking about is conditioned space and unconditioned space. What's a conditioned space? Living temperature control. Any space that's heated or cooled. That's conditioned, right? So if you have a basement that's not heated, and you're going to heat that basement, right? You're going to you're going to put in, I don't know, a family room down there. You're converting from what? Not only non-habitable to habitable, but you're also converting from what? Unconditioned to conditioned, which means you have to meet the code for new construction in the energy code. Well, it's the same thing in this code, but it's not conditioned to unconditioned, and it's not non uh, uh, occupied to uh, to occupied. What it basically is is open to the public, and then not open to the public. That's the change of use. So if you have a building that you change the use. You have to meet the code for new construction. Does that make sense? So if you owned, let's say uh, it's a storefront on Mass Ave in Boston, and right now it's um, uh, it's a um, an office. It's an office space, not open to the public. General office. They don't invite anybody in, so it's not open to the public. You take that space, pull a building permit to transform that into, let's say, um, a bank. Well, let's say a convenience store. What has to happen is you change the use. I, it doesn't matter how much money you're spending. The formula doesn't come into play. What comes into play is you change the use, so now you have to comply. Make sense? With one very big exception. And you need to know what the exception is. The exception is when you're dealing with a residential unit. When you're dealing with a single family or a two family house and you invite people in open to the public, this code is exempt. That, that change of use is exempt. Does that make sense? So that's really, really big when it comes to handicap accessibility, especially for your construction supervisor's license exam. Okay? Oh, you can cut that.